r slash ask reddit what business or store that was killed by the internet do you miss the most arcades for sure my dad used to drop me off at a nickel arcade with five bucks i felt like a king this is a big one for me arcades were how my dad and i bonded when i was really young there was one in our mall growing up called pocket change and we would always go race each other or shoot aliens together i miss that place I never got into arcades because by the time I was old enough to be any good at video games, around 2002 to 2004 basically every arcade game I encountered was $1 2 per play, and I didn't think it was fun to blow a whole $2 on 1 or 2 tries on a video game, especially when I had an N64 at home. It's a shame that everything costs so much nowadays, especially here in Canada with our trash dollar. 12 year old me misses Toys R Us. My son will more than likely never experience the joy of being let loose in a giant toy store. Toys R Us was actually doing fine, not min blowing but breaking equal, until Bain Capital decided it was worth more to force it into debt and sell the land for quick profit. The old blockbuster in my town had a game console that somehow always had new and interesting games to show. My favorite blockbuster story, I was in 4th grade, my friend's dad took us to blockbuster. As a joke, my friend grabbed Grease, which he had seen before and wanted to watch again and basic instinct. He handed his dad both movies and said I'm thinking about one of these, but I can't decide. His dad just shook his head and said haven't you seen Grease enough, and took basic instinct to the checkout. So yeah, that's how I got to watch basic instinct in 4th grade. For some reason, it was way more enjoyable to stroll along the store looking for rental possibilities than it is to browse movies on Netflix Amazon. I agree and I do not know the reason either. I think it had to do something about it being an event, leaving the house, browsing with others, having a wide selection of older movies. It had a grand feeling of anticipation, getting back home and sitting down to watch. It just isn't the same clicking or tapping a screen in your jammies. I miss really good hobby shops. I build plastic models usually World War II aircraft. Those high-end hobby shops have all the closed down. Now all you can generally find are RC shops that have a shelf of a couple plastic models here and there. The only exception in the greater Portland area is Tammy's Hobbies but I'm pretty sure their days are numbered for plastic models as well. I think that has to do with the clientele in the area. All the hobby stores in my area are either plastic models or trains. Or Gundam. The only places around me are Gundam. Not that I'm complaining because I love that shit. If you ever make it to Tokyo, and still dig making plastic models, you will be in hog heaven here. There are many stores with stacks and stacks of kits, Tamiya, and all the other brands, tanks, ships, cars, you name it. Sales pros in general. A guy selling you a fridge who has sold fridges for 10 years and knows all about them. Now I look for stars and try to discern real versus paid versus bot reviews. Yes. Or the guy in the hardware store that actually knows what tool does what and can help you find the best fasteners and stuff. The hardware store thing still exists in small town America. True value and ace to name too. Chain record stores. Like record bar or tower records. Wolf camera. Where I spend many happy hours indulging my photo hobby in the 1990s. I really don't miss paying $17 for a CD in the 90s though. Back when you would listen to every song until you liked each one. The one thing I actually don't miss especially towards the end when they became let's sell all sorts of fandom paraphernalia stores oh and I guess we got some CDS behind these Funko Pops. Horrible prices for anything that isn't a major release. Rarely any engaging stuff. No way to special order things like imports and such. Always whenever I could supported the independent record stores. Borders. The one store in a mall nearby used to be a Walden's bookstore. Then a Borders. And then a BAM. Books a million. Now it's an escape room. Today I learned. Your town is allergic to reading. I worked at Borders near its end. It closed due to sheer mismanagement and incompetence. When things began to look concerning. Borders management decided to keep stores open that should never have been opened in the first place. They were paying in excess of $1 million a month for one store in NYC that wasn't generating revenue anywhere near that amount. This was just one of many colossal duckups that led to the demise of Borders. 
Most of the shops in my small country town close because everyone orders everything off of Amazon. And now there's many abandoned buildings. Funny to see Amazon has replaced Walmart as the bougieman that's killing mom and pop stores. Yep. 25 years ago Walmart was killing the general stores and borders and Barnes and Noble were killing the local bookstores. Now, people are terrified of losing Barnes and Noble due to Amazon and borders has been gone for years. Do you think Amazon will eventually kill Walmart and Target? No. Walmart is an institution. Go to one at some point. There are people cashing their paychecks. People living in the parking lot. People buying motor oil and bicycles and clothes. Add Target. It's simpler. The main business is affordable clothes. Which I doubt will ever go completely online because people like to try them on. Flea markets. Yes. I know they still exist. The problem is that thanks to the proliferation of the internet, it's pretty difficult to find a good deal on much of anything. Especially games. People check the prices on eBay and other places and just price around that. You could go to a dozen flea markets or pop-up shops and the same game will be around the same price at every single one of them. Go to beat the flea market vendors to the product. Most peeps are just buying stuff from estate sales. Co-worker who works flea markets is always talking about getting crap loads of shit for dirt cheap at estate sales. Not exactly the same experience as a flea market. But if you're just in the market for cheap shit then yeah. Estate sales and auctions. My husband buys and resells things on Amazon and eBay. That's where he gets most of his stuff. That and the clearance racks at Walmart. Also, he showed me how just about everything I buy off Amazon is actually from a dollar store. For example, I bought some cute shelf liner off Amazon for $8. Yep, yeah, that shelf liner was $1 from Dollar General. People literally buy out dollar stores in product like that and list it on Amazon for $10, $15, or $20. You can make some decent money doing it, which is pretty surprising. That explains why so much stuff I buy on Amazon is garbage now. I don't think I had to sift through as many crappy products 5 stroke 10 years ago. And even though they claim to be beating back fake reviews there are many products with 4 stars that last about a week. Electronic stores where you get stuff for projects I wish I could have gone there. There still are a few such chains left, but I wish more such stores still existed. Fry's Electronics still hangs on, and ditto with Micro Center. I know Best Buy is still hanging on too, but has to be struggling to some extent. And of course, though more for hobbyists and let on computers, there also was Radio Shack. Where I thought all their stores had closed, by now, their turn to focusing on selling cell and smartphones, did not help them at all. Best Buy and Microcenter both developed strategies to compete with the internet. A lot of customers only like to come in and showroom, and not buy anything. However, in order to combat this, if you can prove that what you're buying can be purchased at a lower price on the internet, then they will adjust the price accordingly. I miss the former quality of Land's End merchandise. Land's End has really gone downhill since having to compete online, to the point where most of their merchandise is unrecognizable from its former quality and durability. LL. Bean has gone south. 2. They recently changed their wonderful return policy at about the same time their clothes and equipment started going to shit. My dad used to work for Land's End. They let him go unexpectedly after almost 30 years. He became gleeful that Land's End's reputation tanked after that. Their stuff is garbage. I won't buy any of their stuff because of how they treat their employees. I worked for them back in college and their shipping. They still made quality merchandise back then and the employee discount was a godsend for my poor ass. I dressed like a Land's End mannequin for my last couple of years of college. KB Toys and Toys R Us, I grew up with weekend trips to KB, and to this day, as a man, I still love toys, it's something I passed on to my own son, and though he's too young to have known KB, I loved taking him to True, even if just to look around, it was one of our things, our father and son activity, and now, there's nothing that even compares. The Sears Catalog I used to love going through that as a kid around Christmas and seeing what I wanted to ask Santa for. What stupid is Sears could have been bigger than Amazon since they already had a head start on the order from home business. But they just didn't embrace the internet and now Sears is dying. 
Their seer in the mid-90s thought the internet was a fad. Imagine if Sears had put its catalog online and fully embraced the internet back in the 90s. On the back end there isn't much difference between a mail order business and an online business. Sears could have become Amazon before Amazon started selling books. Blockbuster. Wasn't alive long to see it frequently but I was inside one and it was cool to see all those movie. Yes, convenience aside, Netflix is a poor substitute. Rarely has the movie I want. People keep telling me that the Netflix originals are actually good, but that's not the point for me. Netflix was marketed to me as this cheap service where I can watch numerous of my beloved movies. It seems that they used that approach to get subscribers to fund their own shows. And now that they have a back catalog, feel at ease to eliminate a large number of movies. Thing is, I'm not looking for something new. I'm not a movie or a TV show enthusiasts. I just want to rewatch my favorites and watch the new remakes and sequels. There seems to be a billion Netflix originals, and none of them stand out for me. Because of this, Netflix doesn't offer me much except for that one show I can't find anywhere else. Funnily enough, this makes me excited for Disney+. Plus. Now that they own so many of the brands I like and have implied that they want to load up their catalog, it's going to be so refreshing to think hey, I want to watch X movie, let's see if I can stream it and actually be able to do so. I miss magazine stores newsstands. Part of my routine for years on Fridays was a walk into the neighborhood newsstand on the way to work. I'd spend 15 minutes perusing the new stuff. I'd usually spend 20-30 bucks on 5-6 magazines. Video game stuff. 14 times. Games magazine. Always at Days SF Chronicle. Whatever. Most of those places are long gone. I suppose I spend less money on that stuff. But I miss it. I miss Walden Books Borders and B. Dalton. I go to the mall a great deal less than I used to because bookstores were a primary attraction for me. The crappy little corner arcade. Not a fancy beercade or a Dave and Busters. I'm talking an actual old guy with a half smoked cigar dingy as hell corner shop. Grimy exterior. No maintenance or effort put in. Dim lighting. And a whole bunch of age arcade machines. Never the newest release. Always minimum a year old. The city's finest snack bar. Offering little Debbie snack cakes for 25 cents mark not for individual resale. And cans of store brand soda sold warm out of the 12 pack. Luxurious duct tape covered bra stools. But he splurged on black duct tape. No silver here. Whoa ho. No bill changer. Just a disgusting bucket full of quarters that the machines get emptied into. Into which he shoves his fist and grabs $5 worth to break the next customer's bill. Some petri dish equivalent of the food chain in the circle of life in 25 cent form. That arcade. The real American arcade. Not this fun center crap with tickets and prizes. No. Just top 5 scores with names like ass f you damn poo and. Of course. Ass one more time. You just made me nostalgic for something I never even experienced. Gamestop. I know that they're still around but since they've changed the way they do business and because they had to adapt to the internet, you don't get the same experience you did versus 10-15 years ago. When's the last time you've been to a brick and mortar store for a midnight release of a game? GameStop would be so much better if they carried all previous game generations. Arcades. There's an arcade in the mall nearby and it's just $10 for the day. There's no prizes and tickets. Just endless arcade games. They even have some Japanese exclusives like Jubeat and Groove Coaster. That actually sounds amazing. 10 bucks for unlimited play? Something like that would be the ultimate hangout spot. Circuit City was always the best electronics store. Radio Shack. I miss looking through the endless drawers of capacitors, transformers, act, and trying to think up dumb projects and things to make. There are still some radio shacks around, but they're not the same, they're just gutted phone stores. Steve and Barry's. All the small bookstores have disappeared in my city, even the second hand bookstores which were my favorites. Oxford bookstores are surviving somehow and everything else is a textbook store. I understand ordering online is way more convenient, I do it as well. But I do miss the feel of being surrounded by books and thumbing through the pages and looking for one that might catch my eye. Most stores you think were killed by the internet were actually killed by Walmart. 
Ultra cheap prices were what killed mom and pop stores. The ones the internet really killed were the book and electronics stores. Mixtapes and mix CDs. They have been pretty much replaced by playlists on Spotify on other sites. But I miss them. It was an art form trying to create the perfect mix that would fit a time limit allowed and had each song flow nicely into the other. There's just something about porno mags. I dunno. Just flipping the pages to see Big Busty Betty's bottom is not the same as just typing Big Busty Betty's bottom in a search bar and seeing all the results on your monitor. It's more convenient and better content wise but the thrill is just not the same. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.